deadly sea is the Triassic. To get there, Nigel has to travel halfway back to the 21st century to 230 million years BC. It's a time when reptiles are taking over the oceans and the first dinosaurs are only just appearing. The Triassic is a crucial time for marine life. Something new's happened. The fish or the mammals, they're not the most ferocious animals out there. This sea is dominated by a group that used to just live on the land, the reptiles. Reptiles dominate everywhere right now. Winged reptiles, the pterosaurs, rule the skies. And the future lords of the land, the dinosaurs, have just evolved. But they're not much to look at yet. Of course, I was here to explore life in the sea. Home to the largest Triassic reptiles of them all. Fortunately, sea reptiles are easy enough to spot because they have to come up for air. My first sighting was a nothosaur. The nothosaurs, they could be a bit nippy, but there's bigger reptiles down there that could easily kill a person. So this is my insurance policy, an electric prod. If they come too close, this should deter them. There's not just one note the sort, there's a pair of them. And they're inquisitive, coming closer and closer, they're so curious. But I'm the first human that they've seen. You don't know how they're going to react. And I'm glad I've got this electric prod in case they become just too inquisitive. But at the moment, they're just curious, circling around me. They've got a mouth full of teeth like razors, they're interlocking. That would seem to me to be the perfect fish trap. And they certainly move fast enough to catch the fish that are around here. <laughs> wow. There's one coming close now and I'm going to try something. Like with alligators, there's only one safe way to hold an othosaur. And that's round the jaws. Hey. <laughs> wow. A prehistoric ride with a nothosaur. They can close those jaws with tremendous force, but the muscles that open them, they are really weak. But nothosaurs, like all sea reptiles, they've got to go up to the surface to breathe. I can't hold him for too long. I'm going to let him go now. Go on, boy. Off you go. <laughs> Hiding here, this isn't dangerous, but it's surely one of the most preposterous reptiles ever. Tanistrophius. Great long neck, great long tail, there's hardly any body at all. That long neck is perfect for an ambush predator. And what it probably does is sweep that neck through the water, sweep it through a shoal of fish. its tail. This has happened to me many times when I was a little kid catching lizards. They do this as well. And this is an insurance policy. If they're attacked by a predator, the predator's distracted by the tail and the creature can escape. And like lizards, he'll grow the tail again. And it shouldn't do him much harm. Look, he's swimming away perfectly there. Golly, this tail is spasming so much. I can hardly hold on to it. Where did that come from?
come from. I think it's a Simbospondylus, one of that great group of marine reptiles, the ichthyosaurs. He's a primitive member of the group, but they're going to evolve into a whole variety of forms. They'll be around for about another hundred million years. He's coming a bit too close. And that slow movement, that's deceiving. With one lash of that tail, they can have really great bursts of speed. God, my heart's hammering that lunge at me. That was a warning shot. That's really up the ante on this dive. I need the electric prop now, and he's coming again. He's coming in again, and I'm going to use it. What a spectacular reptile. Two seas down, five to go. The next encounter takes Nigel back deeper into the past to meet the armored fish of the Devonian. Predators that are quite literally as hard as nails. I'm using the time map to get my head round where I've been. These spans of time are so immense. My first adventure, I went all the way back in time 450 million years ago to ride an orthocone and tussle with those sea scorpions. My second dive, that was 230 million years before the present day. That was with those bizarre sea reptiles. We're now here 360 million years ago. Welcome to the age of giant armoured fish. How was the dive, Mike? Oh, outstanding. Have you got one? Did you see one? I saw, saw it. It came so close. I'll get this in the machine. Okay. The cameraman, Mike, he did a reconnaissance dive just to see what was around. And from what he's saying, we've actually struck gold on the first dive. Exactly what we came here for. Oh, look at that. That's it. Can't be anything else. A Dunkley Osteus. Well done, Mike. How's I mean, what was it like? That's like a real leviathan there. My heart was in my mouth. It just, just took my breath away. And that thing is over 30 feet long. Must weigh four or five tons. That's as much as two or three elephants. Let's pause it, have a look at this. Oh, what a fearsome head. And this shows the classic features of Dunkley Osteus. Armour plating on the front of the body. That can be up to two inches thick. And look at that mouth. Those aren't teeth, those are extensions of the jaw bones. They're for shearing through the prey. And this thing has to punch through other armoured fish. And those jaws are backed up by powerful muscles at the back of the neck there. Look at that. And this is exciting. If this stays around, it's going to be my turn next. And we're going to find out how powerful those jaws actually are. Our plan was to hand feed a Dunkley Osteus. And my job was to get the bait. Meanwhile, the crew was building a cage for my protection. But why was it round? Well, in the same way that a dog can't bite a beach ball, we hoped that the jaws of the Dunkley Osteus would slide off these bars. Fortunately for me, there's plenty of life in the sea in the Devonian. Unlike on land, where as yet there are no creatures bigger than a centipede. This is a placoderm. It's a Greek word, it means armour plating, and you can see why. This is in the same family as Dunkleosteus, 
And for a naturalist, this is a privilege indeed. These fish were only around for 50 million years, then they became extinct. There's nothing like this around in the 21st century. I've got a bet on with the crew that the Dunkleosteus will slice through the bait if it's actually wrapped in chain melt. This is where you feel like you're most vulnerable, actually swimming into the cage with a great chunk of bait. I'm in now, and it will probably take a few minutes for the trail of smell to bring in the predators. And fingers crossed, we'll be able to see Dunkley Osteus. Look what's arrived. This must be the most preposterous shark ever. Look at that fin on the back. Scientists call it the ironing board shark, and you can see why. Must be a male, only the males had that bizarre dorsal fin. Probably to help with mating, probably to display to females. Maybe used in courtship battles between males. And these are some of the first sharks ever to evolve. And this is great for me, I am such a shark fan. But that is, it's surreal. Now he's been spooked by something. It's a duck, the Osteos. It must have smelled the bait. This is what we came for. And it's coming straight towards us. See that really thick protective armor on the head there? Over two inches thick. Only the first third of the body's covered with that. Look at that. These fish, they've got these massive jaws with big, sharp shears sticking out. And what they do is they slice them together, just like scissors working. The very action of slicing them together keeps them sharp. And with that, they can cut through anything. Let's see if I can win my bet. Could you survive a Dunkley Osteus? Log on to bbc.co.uk slash science and take part in your own adventure through the seven deadly seas.